This is an early morning uh, shot that I took a few years ago where uh, the water was perfectly smooth like glass and a lone fishing boat went by, just a single engine, little putt-putt, went by and just quietly in on the far shore and then it started off these beautiful symmetrical uh, ripples which you don't often get because uh, these are all lined up nicely and uh, whereas once you have another watercraft go by it interrupts them and you get all sorts of interference patterns happening. Uh, so this is, I've cleaned the palette, but I'm still using the same piece of paper. And uh, you don't have to worry about all the colors you see in there. It will not transfer. This is uh, definitely borders on being cheap, but uh, it's also environmentally friendly not to use uh, more materials than we need to. I'm going with that. I'm very material um, environmentally friendly. So uh, today's picture is um, a early morning shot of glass smooth lake that was interrupted by an early i'm guessing fisherman uh, that just passed by once and so these ripples constantly changed as they moved towards me and this is uh, what i considered to be about the best point in that so uh, we're going to be mixing up um, a purple that's probably more red and this time I'm using a purple but I'm going to be making a fairly red purple and a very desaturated purple so we want the warm red and uh, I think we'll put down we need some yellow to desaturate it even more and I think I'll use the uh, yellow ochre or yellow oxide depending on uh, what your paint company chooses to call, call that I'm doing the same uh, keeping the red and the yellow and the blue fairly separated um, just because I will be mixing up a very desaturated orange a little less important because we're not making a very um, very saturated purples so we're not going to have a huge problem with that uh, we're going to put the um, horizon or the not the horizon line, but the water line, which is not that different in this long view, but uh, it, it is slightly lower. So we're just going to, uh, I'm going to start with this landmass. I think I'm going to actually cut that a bit short. I don't want this gap to be uh, right in the center. And so, I think that should work. So, so we're going to start mixing a uh, purple. You need to get the white in there very early so you can see what the heck you're doing. This is a very col light color that we're looking at. So the yellow in the warm red automatically produces a very desaturated purple, which is what we want. But I think this is a little bit too dark. I'm using liquids. Uh, just because they're really easy to replenish um, in this particular case. So we've got the line, but we're going to make sure that we go below those lines. We want to make sure we have enough of this paint, uh, rather enough of the sky done, so that we don't have to worry about exactly where we're choosing to put the uh, landmass and we want to take this up high enough that we're not going to. So now we're just going to come in with some straight white and blend that into there. Now we're going to clean that brush and we're going to mix up a very desaturated orange. And right now the 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 white is doing most of the desaturation, but we'll just come in. I could use some of that uh, purple to desaturate it, but in this case we want to keep that 
uh, fairly clean for doing the water. So that, we put that down, that is way too light, or rather way too dark. I was being a little bold putting that in there. So we want to make sure you put down enough paint so that we're not starving that. And then we're just going to get a Aquamaster brush. It's a one inch wide. Uh, and we're just going to back and forth slowly or rather quickly and just vertically very slowly. We just want to blend that into a nice smooth. So we're going to mix up some more of that purple. This time we're going to make it a little bit darker because um, it's in the water and quite often reflections are darker. Not always, but um, and this we are making. So we're just getting it a little bit into the bluer side. You can see this Stay Wet palette is fairly uh, wet as those color or the blue especially is blooming out so we're just going to put that I think it needs to be bluer and as we add the blue in there we're going to have to add some white just to bring back the value so I think that looks about right So we're going to bring that down quite a bit lower. Again, making sure you're putting enough paint down. Don't be too skimpy. I'm really not the one to be talking. So I've used the brush I was using on the purple to mix that more orange-red color. So I think we'll just grab a little bit more of that. So it's like an intern mix. And now we're going to get a little more orange. You will get a little bit redder. Red, you have to watch the red. The red is a very strong tinting color. That's probably too dark. As we always have to keep in mind what that color is going to do. So now I'm going to come back in and just put a little of the purple in there just to, I'm not sure how smooth we're going to want this. We we may want to create some subtle ripples through there but so I'm getting out another dry brush and we're just going to smooth that out so we're going to uh, put in the land mass um, so we're going to make this green but really just barely green And we're just going to, and that looks a little too green. We're going to push that more into the blue side, especially for this back one. And that looks a little bit dark because we know it's going to dry darker. So we'll just. Try putting that in there. And because this is right at the back and it's a more distant tree line, we're not going to put these trees too pronounced.
So I think we're going to just add a little bit of blue just down the bottom of that. And just suggest some very subtle trees in there. Okay, so um, we're coming forward a bit, so we're going to green that up a bit. At no point are we going to get into a full green, and we're always going to try and keep them a little bit into the blue side. Or rather, uh, on the blue side and in the gray tones. I do like liquid paints for the ease of adding more to the palette. You can basically do it one-handed. So we're going to be getting a little bit darker on this other side. This is another brush that is going in the garbage. It really, it's a small brush, but it really isn't holding a nice point anymore. And like I said before, I am definitely a brush abuser. So um, for one reason or another, I've been very sloppy uh, with this one. So I'm just going to do redo the bottom where I've marked it up. and we'll glaze it into the purple. I think that looks pretty good, so we're just going to Put that down and we're going to keep the paint pretty thick right where we've buggered it up. And it's always good to know uh, how to fix something like this. This was a wet and wet blend 
that we're now going to glaze into. It's a little bit easier if the color is the same or close enough. So now we're cleaning the brush and we're just going to go along that edge and blend that in. So I cleaned the brush again, obviously not very well. So I cleaned that brush again and I'm just going to work that edge. And so we'll clean it again. And gradually work down. Very light touch. So I've changed the camera angle because I uh, to do this, it's a little bit difficult to be reaching out in front. I don't normally paint flat. I normally paint on an easel, which is comparatively much easier than working and reaching to see that. So uh, we are just mixing up a dark to do um, to the far shore and the start of the reflections. So we're using the KX9100 rather. Um, so we're just going to put a dark line right near I switched to a longer um, it's KX9100 because I kept drifting off the end of the shorter one. I'm pushing down on the rigger to get a thicker line. That was good.
Sorry, but I had to change the angle. It was just a little too hard to work with the camera center and me off center. Hopefully this is going to look all okay for you on the video. So these little bits in between are uh, where the taller trees are. And um, more solid on the end, mostly due to this gap in the middle where we don't have as much of the dark coming down. We'll just add a little tidbit on the end there. get the really thin lines you really don't want very much paint on that brush So we're just going to push a little bit more of the darks into the top hair. See here, I think I'll just lighten those darks a little bit that side. It's not much farther back, but Just tweaking some of these trees a little bit. <laughs> 